I had suppressed. All right, you're going to have to follow along with me, though, okay? Because I'm going to keep on moving around. All right? Okay, so here's what I want to talk about with these. What I had you guys do is we're going to go through this step by step. So what I asked you guys to do is I asked you to graph a couple functions. y equals x, y equals negative 3, y equals x squared minus 1. All right, we're going to do something with this. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about domain and range. You guys remember domain and range? Anybody? Algebra 1 teachers that? OK, so let's talk about domain and range. We'll take notes on it later. But what I want you guys to do, you don't need to write it down, but let's just think about domain and range in our thoughts and our brains. All right? Domain is the, all the x values all right, that are a part of our function. We could say that make it true that are part of our function. All the x values. So when I look at this graph, right? do you remember when I told you guys to graph, some of you guys didn't put arrows? And I'm like, make sure you put arrows on your line. Because a line, if you remember from geometry, has infinite length, correct? That's correct. Okay. So this line goes infinitely down and to the left and goes infinitely up and to the right, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. So what the domain is of this function is all the x values that are a part of it. So I look over here, is negative 1, is the, when x equals negative 1, does that have a part in this function? That, is that a value of the function? No. OK, well, let's look at it. When x equals negative 1, is, there, is negative 1 on that graph? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it goes down to there, right? What about positive 2? Is positive 2 an x value of that graph? Yeah, it's 2 comma 2 would be of the graph, right? What about 4? Yep. 6, yep. Well, as this continues to infinity, and I keep on going down the x-axis, am I always going to have a y-coordinate that's going to put x on the, on the graph? Am I always going to have an x coordinate that's going to put y or um, x coordinate that's going to put y on the graph in the negative direction? Yes, correct? So the domain for this function is what we call all real numbers. We can write it a diff couple different ways. That's a horrible marker. We can write it as the domain, all right? For the first one, I'm going to say goes from negative infinity to infinity. That means all the x values. The x values for this function are infinite to the left and infinite to the right. Every single number on this x-axis has a y value on the function. Yes? OK. Wait, no, What that means is every number, negative 1 has a value, right? Negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 100, negative 1,000, negative 10,000. It keeps on going to the negative in infinite number. And then I'm saying to the, in the positive direction, 1 has a number, 2 has a number, 4 has a number, 100, 1,000, a million. Every single number, doesn't matter. It's going to have, a, a, gonna have a, um, a y coordinate on the function. right? We'll, talk, we'll get more into it in a second. The range is the y values. So I look at all my y values. It, does y have a coordinate at 1? Yeah. Yes. Does y have a coordinate at 3? Yeah, you go over there as x value 3. What about as I keep on going up with y, am I always going to have a y value for each point on this graph? Yes. What about as y goes negative? Am I all, is negative 2 have a y coordinate? Yes. Does negative 5? Yes. As I keep on going down with my negative y values, am I always going to have a, a coordinate on the function for y? Yes. So we can write the range is from negative infinity to infinity. All right? Now let's look at the next function, y equals negative 3. When looking at negative 3, remember, domain is all the x values that have a part on my function. So if I look at my x values, does 0, is 0 an x value of this function, y equals 3? Yeah, right? It's right there, 0. 0 comma negative 3 is my x value of this function. What about when x equals negative 4? Yep, there's an x value. Negative 6, yep. Negative 10, yep. Negative 100, yep. Negative 1,000, yep. These lines goes infinitely to the right, Adara, infinite to the left, and infinite to the right. So that means I'm going to have infinite x values that are going to be coordinates for that function. Does that make sense? A little bit. So I'm going to write domain in a different way. Domain, then for this function, is all the x values to negative infinity. So x represents all the values of negative infinity to infinity. So all my values have to be greater than negative infinity and less than infinity. It's just I'm just writing it a different way. Okay. Now let's look at my range. Because now we're going to start talking about values that aren't a part of it. When my range does, when my y value equals 0, is that a part of this graph? 
Is 0 a part of that graph, y equals 0? What about y equals 5? y equals 8? y equals 8? y equals negative 8? No. What about when y equals 3? That's the only part of my range, right? That's the only part of the range. The only y value that is a part of this graph is 3, or negative 3, correct? The x values, you have infinite many x values that are part of it, but only when y equals 3 is your range. So you say y equals, no, sorry, negative 3 is the only part of your range. So the range for this one is only when y equals negative 3. Let's continue. Now, this isn't the most beautiful parabola in the world, but if you think of a parabola, as it goes up, right, it slightly keeps on getting wider and wider. So if I keep on expanding that, am I going to keep on getting wider and wider? Is there any constraints on how wide I can get? No. So that means, is every x value on left and right going to be covered eventually as I keep on expanding my parabola? Yes, I am going to have a value for every x value. So my domain, I'm going to write it a different way. All real numbers, meaning all real numbers, all the negative numbers and all the positive numbers, all my x's will, may, will have a coordinate point on this function. But let's look at the range. When I look at my range, does 5 have a coordinate on the, in this function? Yeah, it actually has two coordinates, right? But what about, does 1, does my range, is, it cover, is, a y, is there a y coordinate at 1? Yep, there's two coordinates, right? What about when y equals negative 2? Is that a part of my range? Does that, is that a coordinate? When y equals negative 2, is that a coordinate of my function? No. So it's only from negative 1 and up. So your range, you could say, is from negative 1 to infinity. As long as my coordinate is from negative infinity up, it's a part of my range. So this, again, I'm just writing it one different, another different way. Does that make sense? Make sense? That's domain and range. OK? All right, so what I want you guys to do, what we're going to talk about in the, like, the next video is, um, actually, never mind. We'll just end it with there. So that's your domain and range example. You can edit it down.